Welcome to the podcast, folks. It's the Paul Pay Podcast with my guest today from the sunny uh, land of Los Angeles, where there's uh, swimming pools and movie stars, Javier Hernandez. Welcome to the Paul Pay Podcast. Yeah, Paul, thanks for having me. How are you, man? Normally we're sunny, but right now we're at about 60. It's chilly. Oh my gosh. The pools are frozen over. <laughs> Celebrities have left for a warmer climate, but I'm here. That's all that. That's all that really counts. Really. That's all that really matters, man. All right. Um, you are a cartoonist. I too am a cartoonist, so that's kind of what my podcast is about a lot of the time. Cool. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about cartoon stuff because because I love it. Yeah, yeah. We love drawing. We love our comics and yeah, yeah. You. You're uh, you're the um, what, what's the Los Comics? Los know. Comics, C O M E X. I put the Mex in comics. That's the name of my uh, uh, my imprint in my comic book line. Uh-huh. Uh, so I started. I'm a self publisher. Yeah, you know, I own my own work and I publish my own work. Um, creative freedom. Problem is, I got to pay for all the damn printing and I got to take out my own trash. But yeah, that's okay. So it's I started. A- <laughs> no, that's a you know you when like you know us corporate uh, schlubs, they, we all walk around going, "Hey, how's it going? Hey, living the dream." But <laughs> but you, my friend, are living the dream for real. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, I started living it, or at least independently publishing in 1998. Yeah, with uh, wow. like I said, you mentioned those comics brand, uh, and I wanted to do my own comics. I just was never really. You know, I didn't have it in me like to go to a Marvel, say, and like, well, I got a great idea for Iron Man story. I mean, I love that stuff <laughs> up, and I'm not against anybody who works there, but um, I just wanted to do my own characters. So right. I lost my uh, company and my career there with uh, my first character, El Muerto, the Aztec zombie. Oh yeah, awesome! <laughs> oh, I love. Uh, wow, you know that. I was in Mexico City one time and read this book by Gary Jennings called Aztec. Oh, yeah. I think he did a couple of those, right? A series or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What an awesome book. Awesome story about the Aztecs. Anyway, so Lo Muerta, Los Muerta. Is that how yeah, El Muerto, yeah. El Muerto. <laughs> well, I can, I can uh, murder English. and uh, So Spanish is only going to get it worse. Well, well, a lot of the influence is, and people I'm sure have heard this phrase, uh, a lot of my influence was the Mexican uh, holiday or festival, I guess is a better word, on November 2nd, uh, Dia de los Muertos, which uh. is, translates Day of the Dead, which I think by now, um, with the saturation, or at least you know, appearances in you know, films and some of the and yeah. animated, it's uh, this beautiful holiday, uh, festival in Mexico based on ancient Aztec traditions, and then it's, of course it's combined with some of the... Uh, Catholicism that was that was brought over or slammed over the head, however you want to yeah. interpret <laughs> Right. So it's a celebration of remembering our loved ones who have passed on, family, uh-huh. friends, ancestors. And it's not, boy, I get pissed off when people say, oh, it's the Mexican Halloween. It's like, no, no. If, you get, if you're going to do that, say it's the Mexican Valentine's Day because it's about love. Oh, remember, really? Yeah, it's about remembering your loved ones, okay. putting out like food or maybe mementos or maybe their favorite beer or favorite coffee. You put it out on their little altar you build at home or you mm-hmm. go to the grave site and then you just kind of sit there and reminisce about them. And the idea is that they come back that night and then they enjoy the food you put out for them, you know, their favorite, All right. you know, the hamburger, taco, or cerveza, or taquitos, whatever. So it's a beautiful holiday. And that nice. kind of inspired me to do this character. Okay. And so what was the comic book about? And, and was the Chupacabra? Chupacabra in it? <laughs> ah, no, no, he hasn't made an appearance yet. But I did, I did do a story with El Muerto versus El Cucuy, which is like the Mexican boogeyman. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So my reasoning for making my own comic, um, you know, I always loved comic books. Grew up on like seventies era Marvel, DC, really Marvel. I mean, make my right. Marvel. Uh-huh. Um, and I always zo- zeroed in. Marvel was so good at it on like the haunted hero. Right. Right. You know, uh, like the, the hero maybe is a half monster, half demon, or whatever. He's haunt, you know, but he still wants to do good. And I always like those type of tortured uh, uh, characters. So I wanted to do something uh, using Aztec mythology. Again, that's something you never see. You don't see much of. Definitely back, not back in '98. 
right. and I wanted to do something with the Mexican folklore of Day of the Dead. So I just came up with this character. Uh, his name's Diego de la Muerte. Uh, on his 21st birthday, he gets dressed up in this mariachi costume with the skull face, and he goes out to celebrate his party, his birthday. On his way out there on the freeway, he crashes, is killed, and he's resurrected by the Aztec god of death and turns him into this... Uh, Kind of like, because he rips his heart out, and then now he's like some type of Aztec zombie, you know, meant to do bad, but he uh, rebels against it, and he wants to do good. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Are these in print? Or are they yeah, in- yeah, I'm a print guy. Uh, okay. I'm an old guy, so it's like, ah, this internet stuff is just a fad. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> right. What? What? What do you call it? The internet. What is that? What is that? Yeah. yeah. It was right there on his ham radio, those big old giant microphones. And- <laughs> Wire on. Come in, Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, so you're in print. Um, how, like how how many pages are these? Are they typical like twenty page comics? Or? Yeah, yeah, I like the old style, like twenty, thirty pages. Um, uh-huh. I can go up to about forty sometimes. Uh, uh-huh. You know, and I print. I do. Yeah, like I keep them in print. They're, they're print comics. And then when I get enough comics, I put them together in a trade paperback. Right. Okay. So you do do yeah. the classic, the classic, just like Marvel and DC, or, or yeah, collect it and put it together. And and then it's a real book. So now I'm a real author. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Quote uh, unquote, of course. I get you, man. Uh, but how? So how often do you, do you come out with one a month or one? In, Oh boy, that'd be great if I did one a month. Well, I've been yeah. doing this for years, and I and I do other titles. Right, yeah, right. That's right. the first thing I started, but uh, right. I may put on one or two a year, to be honest. Okay, yeah. I was just, I was like, because that's a lot of work, man. <laughs> no, it, yeah, you, you know, you think about it. I don't know if you know your listeners. I'm sure they're savvy on comics, but if you take a book like Batman, so you got a guy who writes it. Right. Sometimes another guy pencils it. A third guy can ink it, and then maybe a fourth person may letter it. Fifth yeah. person can color it, and then they turn it into the production department, and then you know blah blah blah. Yeah, but us indie guys, self-published guys, us uh, one-man bands, we got to do all you know everything. And this guy's way faster than me. I mean, people I've seen people put out monthly self-published comics, but um, yeah, you know, you know, I do other things. I work. You know, one thing I got to do is keep a day job, but I, I teach. I'm a teacher. I teach comic book classes, uh, cartooning workshops. So right. Wow. Not for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, I I know how much hard work it is. I've, I exactly. I uh, got two graphic novels mm-hmm. that I published, and um, there's a ton of work. <laughs> My idea was to make three. I did yeah. two, and I I thought I'd make three, and then then I'd be good at it. You know, right? And I made two, and I was like, man, this is too much work. And then. And then I watched Jim Luhan's movie, and I got completely distracted. <laughs> I always blame Luhan. I got bumper stickers. That freaking Luhan guy. Yeah, no, he's great. He's very inspirational. With the, I mean, yeah, we're talking. You and me are talking about like drawing, like the panels. And this guy is animating films. You know, uh, yeah. animation. He's doing music, voices. Yeah. And there was a period he was knocking out. A freaking movie, you know, just little shorts every month or two, it seemed like. And I'm like, yeah. wow. That's amazing. <laughs> what am I complaining about? Look at this guy. He's not yeah. cranking him out and doing good work. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, what's your latest uh, latest uh, work? Ah, so, yes, yes. Uh, I'm working on that right now, end of the year, and it'll be out in January. It's uh, um, I was going to buy it for Christmas. Oh, I know. We're going to miss Christmas on that one, but uh, <laughs> we'll start a new holiday in january it's comic book day national comic day but it's called maniac priest yeah cool <laughs> i like it uh, yeah the, the name catches people's eye like what what did you say yeah that's awesome <laughs> and, and and what it is it's um I, I did a story last year i did like a limited 30 uh uh sign a number 30 30 copies but i want to reprint it with some new stories but basically it's my obsession with like 1980s uh Vigilante films. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, Charles Bronson, Death Wishes. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Exterminator, the guy with the flamethrower, and all these right. terribly, wonderfully bloody, violent, you know, uh, <laughs> no redeeming value, but they're entertaining vigilante movies. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, it's basic, the basic premise is a young priest, 
his uh, sister and daughter, his sister and her daughter, his niece were br- brutally murdered. So of course he's very upset, and at one point he's in a church, you know, basically raising his fist, you know, yelling at God, you know, why did this happen? This, right. Should not, things should not happen. This is not right. And then, like you know, sometime later, there's this killer. Not, there's this person roaming the streets, killing off the criminals of Los Angeles. And the rumors are people see it. They see him. It's like it looks like a priest. So the media dubs it maniac priest. Right. And the whole theory behind this, the the um, alleged theory on my part is, is maniac priest or a young priest who was you know consumed with vengeance. Yeah. Want to keep it kind of mysterious, but it's basically him. But he's tortured by that. So again. Right. Back to the tortured heroes, yeah. You know, mixing it with the vigilante genre, genre, and of course you're going to get into these questions about you know uh, faith and religion and you know violence and all that. So okay. I like to mix it up. You know, I yeah, like to what about action stuff? But I like to have yeah. Go ahead. Oh, what about uh? So is it? I mean, what do you think about these shootings that are going on uh, with these? You know, the cops shooting. Uh, by you know, you're shooting black kids or black. Kids. Yeah, no, no, that's 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 yeah, that that is nothing to do with vigilantism. That's just complete, you know, uh, out of control. You know, in, 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 in all the cases, it's just completely unjustified. You know, right, right. Pull somebody over, and then um, they end up getting shot by you. And why exactly? Because they had a broken tail light. I mean, right? No, that's completely. You know, I don't know how it gets fixed. It's got to be state by state. I imagine department by department. But boy, yeah, that, it, it's 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 an epidemic. It's kind of sad, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, oh, so one of the things I had written down to talk to you about is kind of a good segue for that. Well, it's the same topic. Is yeah. I notice you like the Punisher. The Punisher, yes. I yes. love the Punisher, Frank Castle. Frank Castle. Um, he would do something about this today, you know? All yeah. All these shootings, all this violence, all these guns. He would take care of it. He would take care of it with his guns. With his guns, <laughs> yeah. his guns would be blazing. I you know, for an, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that was the, the, I like Batman, but I really liked the Punisher. Uh comic book I thought that was like especially with Chuck Dick do you remember Chuck Dixon yeah doing the uh, writing I don't know yeah I think I read some of his I, I, I remember the Punisher myself from when he showed up in early in the in the Marvel Universe in the 70s he showed up first in Spider-Man and then right. he had that great Mike Zeck illustrated miniseries in probably the early 80s uh-huh. yeah so no I remember yeah I definitely remember him from the old days and I know he's still popular as ever yeah yeah Great. He's got the big skull on his uh, chest. Um, it's a great design. And then, like, yeah, the teeth are like the like the little bullet the bullets. Bullets, yeah. yeah. And the belt. It's like, that's a great design. Yeah, yeah. Yep, totally awesome. The, the thing with vigilanteism in general, I mean, as far as working on it, like, on a movie or a comic or a novel, I mean, it's tricky because I'm doing this as a fantasy. Right. I always am I trying to tell people, hey, you know, if you're fed up with the crime in your street, Go out there and clean up the you know street you know so but yeah I can't, it's not good advice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I can't let that prevent me from telling stories in that genre. Right, right. I know. My wife said to me the other day, you know, based upon like the Oops. book, the the comics and the stories that I like, and then like the movies that we watch. She says, "I've decided that you want to be a drug dealer." <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be a drug dealer. I just want to. Peaceful, quiet life, but you know it's a fantasy, and you're kind of, you know, you uh, live it out safely in the in the comfort of your own home through your comics or your movies or whatever, you know. So, yeah, it's fun. It's an interesting topic because you know, we're basic, basically, we're cartoonists, but we're writers. We're writing right stories, and you know, I don't think about it much. You know, I like to hear debates about it or interviews, but. To me, I'm just sitting here on a blank sheet of paper and I draw the story out, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, once you put it out in the world, I mean, what does that mean? To me, like you said, well, I'm trying to entertain you. Hopefully it's got some meat on it. Yeah. But nothing, you know, it has nothing to do with reality. You know, oh, well, Javier's character is killed, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to, I mean, that has nothing to do with us. And it's a, right. and it's a huge issue. I don't want to take up the whole 20 minutes on that. But no. But Tarantino gets asked this all the time. And yeah. it's been since the beginning of, I guess, written... 
So I, I just try not to get all wrapped up in that. I I'm, I'm kind of selfish. Hey, I got a lot of hell of a lot of stories to tell, and I'm gonna I got a paper. I'm gonna tell them and print them and put them out there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that those are responsible for violence. I mean, if you can have if you have an outlet for your violence, you know, if you have a a healthy like uh, you know. Uh, perspective on it, then I don't. I don't think the Quentin Tarantino films are a cause for any violence in the world. You know, if, if anything, they help. Right? You're, you know, I'm sitting here going, man, I want to go see a Quentin Tarantino film where somebody gets shot up, and you know, right? And then you just chill and watch your movie. Whereas if you didn't have it, then you might, you might, you know, go, oh, well, screw it, I'm gonna go out in the street and fight with somebody, or you know, cause some problems. Anyway. I, I think I'm with you on that one. Um, it's like you said, the Punisher. I mean, I read the Punisher comic. Okay, at the end of the end of the story, all the bad guys were killed. You know, I enjoy the story, but then I don't go outside and I don't, you know, go asking for that. Although, although sometimes it's like, damn, these guys are really overtaking the streets. But anyway, <laughs> so it's an interesting talk. Interesting yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely go on for hours and hours about it. I and then think. I wouldn't want to do that. It's like I'm trying to write stories, not debate. You know, not defend myself in a public forum for like you know an hour. It's like, hey, I'm just a writer. Aren't there real? Aren't there real people you should be going after? Like real murders and real. Right. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm On both you. sides of the law, as you as you brought up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really. Um, what about uh, John Saxon? I, know, I also noticed you like John Saxon. <laughs> what a throwback! He's in like a couple of Bruce Lee movies. He, wasn't he? I remember him. It was a little. Yeah, that's right. He was in a couple of Bruce. I remember him as a kid. Um, on the Six Million Dollar Man, he played the that, oh. side, that robot. Yeah, I remember he had the mask that comes off and it's like, oh, it's actually a robot. Yeah, that's right. I had the action. They made a twelve inch action figure of him as a kid called Maskatron. <laughs> yeah, Maskatron. That's awesome. Yeah, but yeah, John, I think I mentioned John Saxon on Facebook because yeah, I just, yeah. if I had a dream, a wish, a movie wish, I would have you know go back in time and have somebody make a Punisher movie starring John Saxon, and I think I said directed by um, uh, Sam Peckinpah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a good old seventies. Yeah. Brutal, violent, take no prisoners. I don't give a damn what the critics say. Yeah, X thriller, low budget. You know, <laughs> I'm a throwback. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really evident. You know, <laughs> talking to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great era, though. I mean, I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I think I'm more of an '80s kid, but but right. the. Uh, I have older brothers and sisters, and it's just that era of like the music and the look and the colors and the colors, the pattern. Yeah, exactly. Is in the is, 80s too. I was I was a I was a teenager in the eighties. I love I have fun. Okay. Man. Yeah, going first, uh, you know, going on on dates, dancing to new wave music. Man, I love my new wave music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, and and you could come up with a character and just put Tron at the end of it. And, and, and you know, you, those were the good old days. You know, you got your audience. Okay, you get your <laughs> kids. Uh, okay, Tron's on it. I got to get it. I'm gonna maybe I'll do Maniac Priest Tron. And, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, he, well, his his arch nemesis, Priest Tron. Yeah, yeah, they build a cyborg version of him. There we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, here's another thing I'll I need to add. On that. I uh, I need to ask you about. Oh, the uh, Star Wars. Have you seen it yet? I did not know, oh boy, this is why I put the brakes on the whole throwback thing. I have not seen it yet. And you know what? As a kid, I read those Marvel comic adaptions, but I was never <laughs> really a fan. I couldn't huh. get into Star Wars. I'm like probably the one one in 20 people you're probably going to meet in your life. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, you have met and you are listening to the only person who is not a big fan of Star Wars. <laughs> the only person in America. That's like <laughs> The podcast, your your hits will go like through the roof. Yeah, right. <laughs> this guy, you might gotta tune in, gotta listen. Yeah. Um, and so hey, real quick, and then we're gonna go to the deserted island bit. Did you you recently went to a convention? What is that like? Because I haven't been to many conventions, and I've got some work now that I need to get out there. What wow. do I what do I do at a convention? Yes, I was up in the Salinas, California, which is I think about an hour or two south of uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. and um, 
Yeah, it was a Salinas Valley Comic Con held at the John Steinbeck Center. Um, had a great time. You know, at conventions, so what you do is, because we're self-publishers, just so people know, this is kind of like us being in the band. We're going out, going out to the gigs. Okay. Load up your car, drive down there. Obviously, you got a table beforehand and told them you're going to be there. Uh, that's where you set up your uh, table and you sell your wares. You know, you meet okay. your fans. Right. You meet you meet new fans. You meet new readers. Right. Yeah, you would just set up there with your books, and I don't know if you have prints or yeah, you know, we might go into t-shirts and buttons, whatever you have. Right. And then you just sit there all day, two days, whatever it is, and we're just meeting fans and uh, selling them. You know, telling them what we do, selling our books, obviously. Cool. Everybody's got their own style. I try not to be heavy-handed, like, "Hey, come buy this." You know, I'm not right. selling. You know, Get like, your comics here. Hey, kid, step right up. <laughs> Get away, kid. You're bothering me. Yeah. <laughs> So I, with me, because I've been doing this 17 years now, Paul, 17, 18, yeah. and I've never been to Salinas, but people, for in, uh, for instance, may have seen, like, um, I guess backtrack, they made a movie out of my comic, El Muerto, back in 07. So people would walk by, and they go, oh, wait a minute, I know that character, he was in a movie. I go, yeah, I got the DVD right here, and so that's kind of neat. Wow, I should have known that, but I didn't. That's awesome. So, so I can get that on like Netflix. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if it's still on that. It, it has been on before, but you know, they, they always rotate the product because there's a twenty thousand only, only so much room they can have. Right, right, right. So I don't know if it's on currently, but it's been on Showtime. It's been on cable, and wow. you know, it's on DVD. Well, that's yeah, nice. ind- independent film done back in '05, and then released in '07. That's starring, awesome. Thanks, starring Wilmer Valderrama from that '70s show, Fez. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Fez, yeah. He's a, he's El Muerto. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep. Wow, man. That's too cool. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I didn't... Not, I'm not bragging, but to inspire people, like, you know, yeah. comics on the kitchen table, and I saw publish, and it was black and white, and uh, I did an interview on NPR, and eventually, got, you know, the director and producer heard it, and they contacted me. Wow. So they made a movie out of a little tiny comic book. You know, that's great. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... That's that's cool. Yeah, I, I love the idea that you have a blank piece of paper and you can come up with, you know, a blockbuster movie or even an independent film, you know, just by sitting there doodling and drawing. I love the idea of that. That's so awesome. That happened to you. Oh, my gosh. That is no, exactly. cool. I wow. tell people, I'm a regular guy. I still got to, you know. Yep. I go to Target to pick up uh, toiletries. I'm I'm in the drive through at Taco Bell, and I can't understand the microphone, the speaker. I can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just like you guys. That's what I tell people. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen. At the end of the, my show, every time I have a guest on, I put the guest on a deserted island. Ooh. Cool. And I, you get to take five items, Okay. Oh, man. Okay, okay. But I just thought of this today, since this is a milestone episode, episode number 22. Oh. <laughs> um, I thought I would, like, put a twist to it, okay? Yes, yes. So I don't even know how this is going to work, but I just, we're going to try it. You, Javier Hernandez, are on a deserted island, okay? Yep. But you're not alone this time. You are on a deserted island with my, Miley Cyrus, Okay. And you get five things. One, the very first thing you're going to get is, uh, since this is a deserted island, you get to take one dessert. What, <laughs> is, it, what is it going to be? Wow, one dessert. Okay, what de- wow, a dessert on a dessert. That's cute. Um, <laughs> wow, I love my desserts. How do you pick one dessert? Oh, my god! Only one. Oh, what the hell? I'm just going to go for a cupcake. Hostess like, cupcakes that they brought back. <laughs> and they last forever, so <laughs> I'm having to preserve it. Right, right, in case you want to save it for later. Exactly. It'll probably outlive me, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're on this island, you got a cupcake, and there's Miley Cyrus. You get one you get one um, album to bring with you. Whoa. One, one album, okay. Um. Oh man, I, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing where I'm gonna get a greatest hits album because you know I like it, so many bands and I want to like have a variety of you know. It's a good tactic, it's, yeah, it's right? Exactly. Cover you know because yep. you cover like a big era of one particular band. 
Oh God, what would I pick though? Okay, just off the top, I mean, you know, I could pick. I could probably list twenty if I had more time. I pick a Duran Duran uh, decade. Ah, uh, okay. It, it sets out. I mean, I listen to that a lot. I mean, that, that, yeah, just off the top of my head, I would. Right. Pick, that's by Miley Cyrus. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, excellent choice. Um, okay, now you get to pick your favorite uh, piece of clothing. Oh man! Wow. So like only, the only man in America hasn't seen Star Wars. I, I'm not a big like. Oh, I got a favorite piece of clothing in the closet. Um. <laughs> oh man, jeez. Um. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Probably just uh, the you know, one a uh, pair of shorts I wear just to knock around in it. You know, it's casual. Right. Hell, it's island. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Right. Right. <laughs> Excellent. How many? Now, how many is that? That's three, right? I think that was three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Number four is going to be your, your favorite, or you get one, uh, one comic book. Oh, one comic book, man! You keep going up the list where I have like thousands and thousands of favorites. Like, okay, comics, I have thousands more favorites than I do albums. Yeah. Uh, Wait comic. till you hear number five. <laughs> one comic. I hope number five is a plane ticket to get Miley the hell off the island. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> A uh, favorite comic, boy, the, 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 the comic book or like just any. I, I say comic, so you know. Okay, it could be okay like, that's odd. It could be like uh, you know a collection. Yeah, like Cloris Leachman. <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, that's right. I like that. I'm gonna pick. Uh, uh, it's a big book. It's a collection. Of, uh, the Spider-Man Omnibus, which reprints the entire Stanley Steve Ditko run. Wow. Yeah, it has all 38 issues plus the two annuals. And so people know Steve Dick was the original artist behind Spider-Man and Stan filled in the dialogue balloons, yes. Really? I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> They're both co creators Cool. Good choice. Okay, last one. Uh, you get to pick one tool from your tool shed or garage or basement. Okay. Yeah. that for, for a minute, it's like, I'm not a handyman. But, okay. A pencil. Hey, good choice. And you could stab Miley with it. Does that work? <laughs> Poor Miley Cyrus. She gets a bad. She gets a bad rap, I think. <laughs> so let me get this right. If you're on a deserted island, and with Miley and Miley Cyrus shows up, you would rather be there alone. I don't know anything about her other than what I hear. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. follow the yeah. modern. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Could right. be, you could give me Joan Jett? Come on, Paul. I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, you might come back to 10 podcasts and you're like, okay, Hob, you deserve better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah see, I, I don't just, have a pencil so I could draw. Yeah, I just, absolutely. Paper on the island, but. Right, yeah. right. Well, you could draw on a. On a dress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It was awesome uh, talking to you, Javier. Um, good learning about your stuff. I'm going to check out your books and uh, and you can come back on the podcast anytime. I'd love to chat more. Sorry to have to cut it so short. No, but, no, it's it's fun being here. This uh, first time I think I got hit with these uh, desert island things, so that's always fun because yeah, it makes you think about what's important or well, how important is that cupcake to me. So yeah, I answered it. <laughs> yeah, yeah but your your re- your listeners can uh, if you want to follow you here and check me out. They can go to my site, uh, Havzilla.com, J-A-V-Z-I-L-L-A. Godzilla, but with Hav, Havzilla. Oh, okay. All right, <laughs> Havzilla.com. And there yes, we'll find all your, um, we'll find out how to get your books. and Current projects and artwork they can look at and links to all the other stuff, Facebook, Twitter, my, okay. not MySpace. Whoops, sorry about that. Right. Slip up. So you... <laughs> So you had, you're your own publisher, like... Um, yes, sir. I do my own, you know, I sell my own books on my website, like go to who, shop, I go to stores. Who does the, your, the printing? I use different printers. Oh, okay. um, Yeah, I use the printer on demand. I, I, can, I can send you some later if you're interested in printing. Yeah, some yeah, I'd be interested in looking around. Yeah, but, I, but I, I look for different printers. Sometimes I go out of business, you know, you're using something for a few years. Okay, well, I'll just look for somebody else. But I, I, I do print on demand. I'm no longer printing like huge runs like I used to. Like oh, 3, yeah, I gotcha. 
Okay. Print on demand, Paul. You could do one copy, five copies, fifty, or a hundred. I mean, right, keep it local. Right. right. And, yeah. So that's that's a new option. That it's a great option nowadays. It's kind of kept me in business. I think a lot of yeah. flexibility. Cool. And and one, one last question for you, Javier. When you go to a comic book convention, how many do you get printed? Well, what I do is like I have a lot of my books in print already. So I, you right. know, but I'm load up the car for the convention. I just take you know. 20 of this, 20 of that, 20 of that. I, I try to always I have some stock, yeah, because I have a web store. So, yeah, I try not to just print just for a show. I, like, I always keep right. my stock. No, right. yeah. I mean, I know space. Just put them in your garage or your back of your room or something. and Because, yeah. you know, if you wait, sometimes it's tricky if you wait for a convention. Like, the print, the book may not get printed that in time. Yeah, you know, right. Like delays or hurricane, whatever. So Right, right. <laughs> try not to. I always try to have a little, you know, cushion of comics. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Plus, cool. I can, like Scrooge McDuck, I can come home, throw them on the floor, and dive right into them. Like, oh, my comics. I'm going to sleep on them. I'm going to lie on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a mental picture that we're going to leave our listeners with. We <laughs> Please come back again next week when uh, Javier rolls around naked in a bunch of money. So, no. Oh, that'd be good. That's an upgrade from comics, though. Right, <laughs> indeed. All right, man. I got to get get going. Thanks for coming on, Javier. It's really fun having you. Thank uh, you so much. I do appreciate it. And you know, well, I'll come back one of these days. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Keep in touch. Sure. Thanks. All right. Check you out later. Take care.